Recording your acoustic guitar without a microphone is a viable option if your room doesn't sound great, if you don't have a mic yet, or if you simply want to lay down some tracks as quickly and easily as possible. In this video, I'm going to teach you the tools and techniques that you'll need to get the best sound possible out of your acoustic guitar without the need for a microphone. So the technique that we're using to record our guitars today is called DI or direct input. But before we start recording, I'm going to show you the tools and the equipment that you'll need and how to best prepare your guitar to get the best sound possible. And then we'll dive into some recording. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of using DI over a mic recording to give you a clear idea of what it means to use DI. Let's do this. You're gonna need five pieces of equipment and I imagine you have most of these already, but we'll go over each one just to make sure you've got everything you need. Number one is an electroacoustic guitar, of course. Now you need an electroacoustic rather than just a standard acoustic um, because you'll need that jack or XLR input to connect to your computer. The guitar will have a pickup inside just like an electric guitar and pick up the vibrations of your strings and convert them into an electrical signal that we can record direct. And secondly, you'll need your computer, of course, with a digital audio workstation. Now, today I'm gonna to be using Pro Tools uh, to demonstrate, but you, you can use any DAW you feel most comfortable with. Then thirdly, we need our audio interface, which is your external sound card that will convert the analog audio signal into a digital one and get it recorded onto your computer. You need a DI box for this as well. Now you can record without a DI box, um, but using a DI box in between your guitar and interface is gonna give you a clearer recording, it's going to balance the signal and reduce any signal degradation. It's also going to give you more versatility. For example, the Behringer Ultra DI that I'm going to be using today, it has some attenuation buttons so you can quickly reduce the level of the audio coming in. And it's also got jack and XLR inputs, so it's compatible with whatever kind of guitar you have. You can get a good one really cheap as well. This Behringer one only costs about 30 quid, $50, and it's built like an absolute tank, really solid piece of kit. I'll leave you a link in the description below. And finally, we need cables to connect everything. You're gonna need an XLR to XLR cable to connect your DI box to your audio interface, and then another XLR cable or a jack cable, depending on your guitar, uh, to connect your guitar to the DI box. Now that you've got everything you need, it's time to prepare yourself and prepare your equipment for the best recording possible. So it's important to remember that when we're recording with DI, we're not picking up any of the room sound. It's all about the guitar itself. So the sound that you're gonna record is only ever gonna be as good as the guitar you have. So that's a factor that you maybe can't control immediately. Um, but we're gonna look at the things we can control. We're gonna try and set the guitar up to get the best sound possible from the get-go. So first you wanna make sure your strings are sounding fresh. The strings are what, you're, what the pickup's picking up ultimately. So if they don't sound too good, then you're not gonna get a good recording. And we don't wanna get into fixing it in the mix sort of territory. We wanna record as though there's no mixing. Of course, you wanna make sure your guitar's nice and in tune as well. Nothing ruins a good guitar recording than a slightly out of tune string. Some guitars may have some onboard EQ options. For example, on this uh, Ibanez guitar, I've got a, a tone shaper and a treble, a middle and a bass knob. So. We're gonna play around with those and see what gives us the best, most kind of rich, balanced sound. Whether or not you're using a pick really affects the sound as well. Uh, it's gonna sound a lot more brighter and you'll hear that kind of plasticky sound of the pick on the strings getting picked up by the DI. So it really depends on what sound you're going for there, but it, again, you can try recording both and see which you prefer. Now we're sitting comfortably, let's get things set up and get some audio coming through into our session. So I've plugged one end of the XLR cable into the guitar, then the other end is going into the input of the DI box, then the output of our DI box is going back round and into a channel of the audio interface. Now this DI box needs some power to work, it doesn't have a battery in, so we're going to turn on the 48 volt phantom power button. Now if I play a little bit of guitar, see that it's on the, on the harder notes, it's clipping a little bit. So let's just turn that down. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got everything set up. We're gonna try recording something and see what it sounds like. As I mentioned before, we don't want the audio clipping, which means it's reaching zero on the fader because when, when the audio is hitting uh, zero on the way in, you're gonna get some nasty digital clipping, which we don't want. So if we play like quite a loud chord, you'll see that it's only reaching up to that minus 16, which is absolutely fine. You don't have to worry about it being too quiet. We're gonna get a solid recording out of it. Um, I will go more into detail about levels, recording levels in another video. I'm just gonna hit record and play a straight chord. I've got the shape setting set on minimum. I wanna hear what that sounds like. Let's go. And record it again with with the shape on max. Let's see the difference between the two. Okay, so it's a fair amount warmer with, with the shape up. I'm gonna go somewhere in the middle. It definitely sounds a bit brittle um, without, without that on there. I'm also gonna take out a little bit of the mid-range, a little bit of the bass, and boost the treble a tiny bit. I'm gonna keep the guitar on max volume and only adjust using the audio interface. Now I know these settings work, but of course, if you haven't recorded your guitar using DI yet, just take some time, try different settings, see what sounds best. It's always best to spend a little bit of time at the beginning, you know, rather than getting to the end of the recording and, and realize it doesn't sound quite right. So now that you've seen the process and you've heard what DI acoustic guitar can sound like, let's go over the pros and cons and have a think about what's better, recording with DI or recording with a mic. Starting with the pros, recording acoustic guitar through DI is, is cheaper normally than recording through a mic. Again, the bass equipment is the same, the computer, the audio interface and, and everything, so that doesn't really make a difference. The difference is you're gonna need a DI box um, for recording with DI guitar. But again, you can pick one up for about $50, probably less secondhand. And in a pinch, you can make do without a DI box. If you're just recording a quick demo, you could just plug straight into the audio interface. So effectively, it's costing you nothing extra aside from the equipment that you probably already have, the computer, the audio interface, etc. But recording with a mic, you're going to have to buy a mic, of course, you're going to need to get a mic stand and ideally kit your room out a little bit better with some acoustic treatment because recording with a mic, you're going to be picking up a lot of the room sound as well. Which leads me on to the second pro. The room sound doesn't affect the recording when you're recording with DI. So if you're recording uh, in, a, in a noisy place, um, or if your room just isn't set up, if you're living in a small flat, something like that. If you're recording straight in with DI, the room sound is not gonna affect the audio at all. Whereas recording with a mic, it would. It's also quicker. You can just plug straight in and get recording. So if quality isn't the most important thing, you just wanna lay down a demo, um, yeah, you can just plug straight in and get going rather than having to set mics up and things. But the main con when it comes to recording a DI guitar over mic guitar is that it doesn't normally sound as good. It doesn't normally sound as natural because you don't have the natural room sound and you're not going to be picking up those natural playing sounds as well. The, the finger slides on the fretboard, the percussives as you, you move your hand on the guitar body and things like that it doesn't tend to sound as natural or realistic. But it really depends on the kind of song that you're recording for. If you're playing a song where the acoustic guitar is really prominent and maybe it's the only instrument in the song, just with some vocals over the top, um, with some really kind of intimate percussive playing, I probably wouldn't go for DI unless it was just for a demo. But then if you're recording, say, a rock song and it's just a little bit of acoustic guitar in the background uh, for some texture, then DI guitar could be sufficient. But if you've got a really nice sounding guitar with a good pickup in and you really work on it, you can get some surprisingly nice tones out of recording through DI. 
And there are a few plugins that really help when it gets to the mixing stage as well, making it sound realistic, giving it some ambience. I had a comment in one of my previous videos, actually. Somebody uh, referred me to a Spanish musician, Natael Cano. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Um, but he uses DI guitar in his recordings and it actually sounds really good. It sounds quite warm. Um, so I'm going to leave a link in the description, actually, so you can have a listen to that just to give you another example of the eye guitar other than what you've heard in this video. So thank you for that. And speaking of mixing, that's what I'm going to be going over in the next video, mixing the eye guitar, how to get it sounding the best that it possibly can. So if you hit that subscribe button, make sure you don't miss that. Or if it's already out, I'll leave a link on the screen now and in the description. And let me know in the comments section below, what's your preferred method of recording acoustic guitar? Do you prefer DI or mic'd? And let me know why. It'd be good to get a discussion going. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope this video was helpful to you and I'll see you next time.